Welcome back to Animal X. In childhood, big bad wolves are something we imagine in fairy stories, like Little Red Riding Hood and the Three Little Pigs. But in India, there's a real fear of these cunning predators after an astonishing number of child killings. But just what's out there, a wolf pack or wolf men? In northern India, nightfall brings with it a certain terror. All ears are tuned for the sounds of hungry predators in search of young, vulnerable victims. A killer wolf pack that so far has been blamed for attacking more than 70 children. Animal X traveled to the impoverished district of Ray Bareli in the state of Uttar Pradesh to investigate the incredible reports of man-eating wolves. It's a story that's made headlines around the world and has grown bigger in the telling. Now entire villages are barricading their doors against these so-called devils of the night. Initially, we thought it's just an accidental attack, but kept, we kept on receiving information that more and more child are being attacked. Dr. Ram Lakam Singh says the first attack occurred in March 1996. Most of the victims had been between one and three years of age, although the wolves have gone for older children too. Some mothers claim their babies were snatched right out of their laps and dragged off into the night. 76 children were attacked. 45 of them killed and eaten, and 31 left wounded. It's, it's a record in 20th century anywhere in the world. 11-year-old Sumitra Singh is one of the lucky ones, a survivor of this terrifying phenomenon. Her frightening ordeal happened one hot August night at 2 a.m. The family had moved outside to sleep because of the heat. Little did they know their daughter would now become easy prey. No one heard the wolf approach. It was only when Sumitra screamed that her parents and grandmother flew into a panic. The animal grabbed her once, dropped her, then grabbed her again. Her father eventually managed to scare it off into the forest. For the rest of her life, Sumitra will carry a stark reminder of her brush with death, teeth marks made by a fierce predator who left still hungry. Mysteriously, Sumitra wasn't the only person to be attacked that night. In a village just a few kilometers away, two wolves had gone on another feeding frenzy. Sarjo Devi says she learnt of the attack at a hospital where Sumitra was being treated. She spoke to a father whose daughter had been mauled to death by wolves. He had the baby's head with him. This is the man she met at the hospital, Mohammed Ishmael, father of two-year-old Ruxana. He has vivid memories of the shocking event. It also happened outside while the family were sleeping. Mohammed says he saw two wolves in the bush after the attack. The one that had snatched his daughter was moving slowly. The other was further ahead. Despite a frantic search soon after the baby was taken, nothing was found. The situation changed, though, in the morning. Mohammed says the search party spread out to cover more ground to look for the killers as well as his child. At 6.30, they made a horrific discovery. They found the lower half of the baby's body. Further on, they found the baby's head. Her torso was missing. For Ruxana's grandmother, the memory of that night is an extremely painful one. She was there when her granddaughter was snatched from her bed and remembers how helpless everyone felt when they could not stop the wolves from taking her. Now, families have been told to take precautions not to leave children outside after dark. Villagers have also organized groups of night watchmen so that someone can always be on the lookout for stalking wolves. The reality of it all is that locals here have virtually become prisoners in their own homes after nightfall. For some, though, the warnings have come too late. Badrunisha Ishmael says, of course, people have changed their ways, but nothing will bring back her only granddaughter. 
The government, meanwhile, has set up teams of wolf catchers. Every night, the hunters search for any signs of the wayward predators, and if they find them, they shoot to kill. To coax the wolves out into the open, team members have tried everything from playing a tape recording of a crying child to using live bait. But more often than not, they're outwitted by the cunning animals. So why have the wolves of India turned to man-eaters? Ironically, they're classified as an endangered species here, and since changes were made to conservation laws in the 1980s, their numbers have increased up to four times in some areas. The government is now accused of making a goodwill gesture that's gone disastrously wrong. This official says the other problem is that over time, the wolves' natural habitat has decreased due to cultivation. In desperation, they've been forced to look for other sources of food. As people move in, their children become an easy target, and so the attacks occur. Local shepherds in particular have come in for criticism, accused of blatantly moving their flocks closer to the wolves' natural environment. With the situation at crisis point, the government has waived its conservation laws allowing people to kill dangerous wolves in self-defense. Villagers are told to shoot at it with a rifle or hit it over the head or spine. Such incredible stories of invincible beasts snatching children have led to rumors that it may not be the work of a wolf pack, but of wolf men. While it's standing and leaping, its height almost becomes five, six feet. Certainly in ancient folklore, there have been many bizarre tales of wolf men eating and attacking children. In India, some people's fear has turned to hysteria. This elderly resident says he certainly doesn't think the baby snatching is the work of a wolf. After all, he says, wolves are shy creatures and they wouldn't have the courage to do such a thing. He says word is needlessly being put around that a wolf is responsible, but in reality, it's a different story. So, could there be wolf men lurking in their midst? Those who believe in the werewolf theory claim to have seen a creature with superhuman powers capable of changing its form. And stopping the rumors has proved all but impossible, despite official announcements that the wolves are definitely not human. Those who've grown tired of waiting for the wolf catchers to get lucky have taken the law into their own hands. Several people have been attacked by lynch mobs for supposedly being the wolves in disguise, and the villagers' primeval fears, fueled by superstition, have led to the deaths of three men, one of them incinerated in a vehicle. Wolf men? or wolf pack. Whatever the locals' beliefs, there appears to be no easy solution to the problem. With the government sticking to its plans to make wolves an endangered species, their numbers will continue to increase just as northern India's population continues to grow. As civilization creeps a little further into the wolves' natural habitat, the baby snatchers may well be around for some time yet. It said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.